In this Photoshop demo, I want to show you how to tone down the leached colors in old vintage photos. Vintage photos from like the 70s, the 60s, they tend to turn more red because of the cheap chemical processing. So to show you that, I'm going to go to File and Open and find my Chapter 8 folder. And I'll open 8.7, too red. And here's a photo of me and my brother in one of those early Christmas times. And wow, that photo looks horrible. There is so much red in that photo. Of course, there should be some with Santa soup, but not all this ugly red. So what I'm gonna do first, as always, Command J. I'm gonna make a copy, jump to another layer. That would be Control J on a PC. When you have an image where there is one predominant color, what I would try is your levels. And here's why. If you have an image with white and you obviously have an image of darks or blacks, you also want to find an area of gray. If it has white, black, and gray, like this metal, you can tone down a color cast in an image. Now, if I have a photo, the first thing I always try for color casts is image menu, auto color. That works okay, but it's not quite what I wanted. The colors still look a little dull. So let's go to edit and undo. And now I'll try levels. Image menu, adjustments, levels. Okay, right down here, there are three little eyedroppers that people always overlook. The one on the right represents white. That's why it says sample to set the white point. This one says sample to set the black point. And then this one balances out tones by looking for shades of gray. So I'm going to click on the one on the right. And I'll click on this white part of his beard. It's the brightest, whitest part of this photo. Then I'll click on the black and I'll click down here on his black belt right there. Then I take the one in the middle, the gray, the midtone, And I want to look for areas that would be gray. So right up here might be a shade of gray. Well, that didn't work. That turned it to more green. So right here might be a little metallic gray right in there. And I just keep sampling these values until I get a decent shade of color. Okay, this is looking okay, but it's looking a little dull. I like that right in there. That looks pretty good. I'll click okay. And then I wanna do a little bit more color editing. So I'm going to come up to image menu again, adjustments again, and I'm going to try some shadows and highlights. Just brighten up the room a little bit more. Okay, that actually kind of went overboard. So I'm going to take my radius and drag it over, kind of balance out some tones a little better here. Maybe bring the tone down or the amount down just so I can get just the right value for this photo that I'm looking for. I think that looks pretty good right there. I don't want to adjust the highlights because anything greater than zero means get rid of the highlights and it'll look kind of weird. So maybe this is a little too bright. I might tone it down a little bit, but nothing crazy. You have color adjustments. Right now, what I would always look at is the value. See what the value is first. It says plus 20. So if I drag to the right, I really saturate the colors. If I drag to the left, I can desaturate those. If I change my mind, put it back to the plus 20. Okay, but I think it looked better going a little more to the right. Bring out a little more of that red in there. At least I got rid of the red and the overall skin tones and the wood and things like that. Now I take my mid-tone slider. If I drag to the right, I get more contrast. Drag to the left, I get less contrast. 
So I want to keep that at a zero where it was before. I don't think it really needed any changes. So let's just type zero. Here's before and there's after. Before and after. I kind of like that. I'm going to click OK. But I don't like this yellowish tint in the hair. A little bit too much yellow going on over there. So I'm going to do another adjustment layer. I'm going to go to my adjustments. You know it. I'm going to click hue and saturation. And then right up here it says master. I'm going to click that and just adjust the yellows. So I can go to my saturation, desaturate some of the yellow in that photo. So I get a little more blonde look, a little less of that yellow stain on here. And you could turn off the eyeball. You can see how much yellow I took out right there. Kind of tones it down, looks a little more natural. And I think that's looking pretty good. Okay, what I also want to take advantage of is the fact that this old 70s type of photo was printed on that really bad textured Kodak paper. I don't like that look. It's like little dimples in a golf ball. So what I'm going to do is now that I like the color, I'm going to flatten out my image right there from the upper right corner of the layers panel. But I don't like all this dimpling and texture. So what I can do for that first is run a filter. Filter menu, noise, dust, and scratches. That is like a very subtle blur filter. It keeps your details, but it looks at the larger open areas. I just keep it on one. That's the lowest setting, one and zero. Here's before, where I got a little more texture on the face, a little more texture on his face. Here's after, where it starts to smooth that out. It doesn't get rid of everything, but it definitely helps. Then, you can see even more of that up here. So I'm going to run a camera raw filter. Filter menu, camera raw. Now I'm in the camera raw window. And I'm going to zoom in a little bit right there so I can see some of that texture that's still there. And over here on the right, I'm going to go to the detail section. I'll just click on the word detail. Okay, I have a noise reduction. I'm going to drag that to the right till I get a nice smooth look right in there. Reduce a lot of that texture and noise. I can drag the detail to the left a little bit. I'll go to color noise reduction. Drag that up a little more. Drag the detail back so I really start to smooth out these areas. And I'll click OK. There we go. I got a nice, smoother shot. It's not going to get rid of everything, but it can definitely get rid of most of that texture right there. I got nice reds where I want them, not reds over the whole photo. If I do a little bit of that noise reduction, it tends to blur the photo a little bit. So now I can run a filter sharpen and unsharp mask. This is the sharpen filter that gives you the best controls over the process. So now I'll set my amount to about 80. I'll set the radius to about 1.5. Just add a little more clarity to the photo right there. That looks pretty good. And then I'm going to just touch up a few little areas that I don't like. So I can zoom in on the pants right here. I'll take my spot healing brush, make the brush tip a lot smaller, and then I just dab over these little spots that I don't like. That little marking right there on the pants. Got a couple little marks right in here, little bright spots that I don't like. And I just spot them out literally with the spot healing brush. I'll come up and spot out a few little areas right there. There's a little weird mark on the shirt. There's a little gray spot on the sleeves right there. 
little gray spot on the shirt. I'll search around for any other little spots that kind of jump out at me. I'll spot out a couple of these little areas right in here. A little spot right there. And a little spot on his shirt. There's a little scratch on his shirt. And a couple little spots over in this area right here. There's a little scratch right there. We'll take that out. And I think that's looking pretty darn good for a cheap photo from the 70s. I like this result. I don't like a little bit of the fading across the top. So I can always jump back to my crop tool. Just bring that down a little bit. Maybe bring the edge in a little bit and get rid of those kind of faded edges right along there. Just a light cropping. And I hit enter or return. I've got a nice photo, a little more suitable for presentation than the garbage red photo that I started with. And that's it. Color editing. It's a mixture of little bits here and there. It's not a one-shot deal. As you just saw, I did little adjustments all over the place, but it definitely gives you a good photo suitable for re-presentation rather than a garbage photo you would just throw away. So I'll go to File, Save a Copy, and I'll call that Last Name, First Name, To Red. I'll save it on my desktop as a JPEG, always high quality. And now you have the ability to make your old holiday photos look nice again, like me and my adorable little brother.